The tech industry is constantly changing with new trends and technologies, but it feels like nothing has been more significant than in the last few years with the rise of AI and LLMs. And when you couple that together with the overhiring that took place by a lot of tech companies during the pandemic, it has created an interesting situation to say the least. Uh, frankly, I would say it's pretty tough, honestly. Like the tough times have really been highlighted by the amount of layoffs that have taken place in the last two years. And it feels like every few days I hear of people talking about how AI is stealing software engineering jobs and how it's very difficult to break into the market as a new grad developer now. Today, I just want to spend a little time giving my two cents on the situation. Obviously, I am definitely no expert. I'm just a normal software engineer that thinks this stuff is kind of interesting, but by no means am I an expert. I definitely don't pay attention to all of the latest developments, uh, which I will get into more later. First things first, in regards to job security and my role as a software engineer, I would say there's kind of a scale of not worried at all to extremely worried. And I would say I'm somewhere in the middle. I'm kind of leaning towards not worried at this point, but I don't want to be delusional. Obviously, regardless of the rise of AI, it's clear that companies want to be more efficient and tech companies overhired during the pandemic. In fact, we've actually seen layoffs at Microsoft scarily close to my team. So I'm definitely a little bit more wary, especially in the recent months. However, I do work in Azure's HPC AI group. So that means we are basically writing software to help manage the AI infrastructure that is used by other companies to run their AI workloads for both training and inference. So in that regards, the rise of AI is in some ways creating more work and responsibilities for my team, which is good. But again, of course, we're not immune to the fact that you probably need less software engineers than you did before the rise of AI and software engineering to get the same amount of work done. Generally speaking, I think if you have a project that has been around for a while, decently sized and was made before this whole vibe coding era, you're gonna need real human software engineers just because at this point, I don't have a ton of confidence that Cursor or GitHub Copilot and Agent Mode can holistically understand your project or service and you know implement features and stuff like that. Of course, that is changing every day, it feels like. But on that same thought process, I do think that front-end work is probably the first to get replaced by AI. And I also think that it is extremely tough right now to be a new grad software engineer, just because that these are the kind of tasks that can be more easily replaced by AI. I am a mid-level software engineer, I would say, and even then I feel like really the value in me, hopefully, is that I'm able to do system design work and understand architecture on that level, but historically, lots of times, people would think that that is something a senior software engineer would do. Full disclaimer, I have not used Cursor or some of the other options out there, but as a Microsoft employee, we have had access to GitHub Copilot since the early days, and I think pretty much anyone that has used GitHub Copilot would agree it's pretty awesome. It's definitely really useful, but even in agent mode, I don't feel like it's there yet where it can replace me and I can kind of give it prompts and just kind of let it go. At this point, it is super useful for kind of giving me a starting point or you know code completion, but I'm always having to check it. Like I, I don't really have that much trust in it. For that reason, I am thankful that I went through undergrad and most of grad school without ChatGPT existing, because at this point, like I practically always know what it should look like, but it saves me a ton of time because if I prompt it and it you know gives me the code and it looks right, then I'm like, okay, well then I'll use it and then of course test it but I'm not just blindly prompting and accepting what it gives me. Mm -hmm. 
As far as keeping up to date with the latest AI models and technologies, I really don't spend much time paying attention to that at all. Frankly, I would because I do think it's interesting, but it doesn't matter too much from a developer's perspective just because I think the main thing that I care about is number one, do I have access to it? And number two, does it give me the results that I want? My current workflow is pretty much like I'll use GitHub Copilot, prompt it, and like I said earlier, I kind of have an idea of like what the expected result should look like. So if I'm not liking it, I'll switch the model. So I'll prompt it with like 4.0, then I'll switch it to uh, 3.7 Sonnet, for example. And really, I have no idea the differences between the different models. I just switch between the ones and try and use the one that works offhandedly. It seems like the 3.7 Sonnet works pretty well, but with OpenAI one, it's way too confusing. I mean, Sam Altman himself said that like the naming system has got to change. and. Anyways, what I do think is interesting and what I do want to get into is just learning how to build off LLMs and make larger systems leveraging them. So I did kind of delve into RAG and how we can go about adding documents to augment the LLM. So that has been super interesting and also useful if you want to kind of build your own chatbot that knows about your company's documents and data. The next step for me is probably, you know, looking into model context protocol and setting up an MCP server, but I haven't really carved out the time for that. Everything comes at a cost where obviously if I'm going to be working at that and I'm able to pitch it and work on that at work, it takes away from software engineering tasks that could immediately deliver value and impact. I do think it is a little bit unfortunate in terms of my master's. I got my master's for machine learning, but it was very much like classical machine learning. Generally, it's predictive machine learning. And nowadays, in the last three or four years, it's been a huge shift into like interactive AI systems and LLMs. And I really didn't learn anything about that in my master's. So having to kind of carve out time now to learn about this is unfortunate, but it's kind of the job, you know, constantly learning and trying to reframe my skills and mindset to remain desirable and employable in this ever-changing job market. So sorry for the long rant, but uh, that was just my two cents. Let me know what you agree with, don't agree with uh, in the comments, and I'll see you guys next time.